What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. So, we're going to talk about OTAs from this week. Practice was being held today. So, a couple things worth of note uh, from a couple different guys here, looking at some of the stuff from what Nate Atkins and Zach Kiefer had to say today. Uh, so, first things first, a uh, couple people that weren't there today. Uh, Kenny Moore, obviously, we know from last week, we were talking about how, you know, he's unhappy with his contract right now. Darius Leonard still being out with rehabbing that ankle. And Yannick Ngakwe is also not uh, there at the moment. But right now, Yannick is currently in Florida and he is with his trainers working on some stuff down in Florida. Zach Kiefer told me that he is expected to probably be at the Colts mini camp next week. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, Kari Willis was also a no show for the OT OTAs as well. Um, so a couple things again, this is still really early stuff. I mean, again, you can't really take too much for it, but Matt Ryan being accurate, sharp, just like everything else. He, uh, apparently he carved up the seven on seven in the red zone, uh, hitting Pittman, Granson, and Campbell during that. Uh, Paris caught as many balls as anyone looked good. Apparently Paris Campbell had a fantastic day. Uh, yeah, they said he, he was just as active as any other wide receiver uh, on the roster today. So, you know, he got involved in a lot of different ways in the seven on seven. So, I mean, Look for Paris Campbell to maybe be a slot guy because they were saying, you know, th those uh, those drag routes across the middle of the field, getting him open on those. Matt Ryan's been finding him and he's been dumping him to Paris Campbell easy. So it, Paris Campbell looking good in OTA so far. Let's hope that continues to be the case. Uh, on one play, it's reported that Patman beat the cornerback really deep and was wide open. Ryan put it right in his hands and he dropped it. Uh, you know, obviously that's not a good thing when you're a player that's on the cusp of the roster and you're dropping touchdown passes like that, you know? So, um, Isaiah Rogers apparently was really good today. Um, he's been pretty good through OTAs, probably been the best defensive player for the Colts and OTAs so far. And we talked about Isaiah Rogers being one of those guys that could really step up in a big way for the Colts this next season. So look for Isaiah Rogers to continue to do more. Uh, Zach also saying doesn't think it's going to take long for Alec Pierce to settle in with the first team offense. Yeah. And we kind of expected that. So that's good to hear. Uh, and more on the Darius Leonard thing. Uh, Darius Leonard wasn't practicing again today as he continues to rehab with that ankle uh, says the team is being cautious. Sometimes when you're going through something, you hit a lull and you have to stop. That was what coach Reich had to say after the OTAs and they were asked, they asked him about potentially getting another surgery on his ankle. And they said another surgery has not been discussed with Darius Leonard. So again, the, it seems like the surgery route is just not something that the Colts and uh, Leonard are going to do. At least at this moment, they seem to think that, this healing is doing what it's doing and it's going to get better as time goes along. Um, again, Reich saying that, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, he said that he hasn't talked with Kenny about anything. Um, and then tight end Molly Cox was asked about Matt Ryan changing the offense and things like that. Uh, it says with Matt, the ball is out. You come out of your break and you better be ready because it's not a slow turn your head and wait. Like you turn your head and the ball is going to be on point. So that's a great thing to hear, especially early on. I said, oh yeah, he's on us. Mo ad saying that every single time they break the huddle, Ryan yells, get set. Yeah. Says Molly Cox called his former teammate, Jack Doyle last week to tell him how much rem Ryan reminds him of luck in that regard. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was very interesting because yeah, he was saying um, ever since Matt Ryan's been in Indy, says that I think Nate Atkins put this out there that Mo Ali Cox did say that it was like having another head coach in the room, like everywhere. It's not just on the field. It's like stuff in the locker room and in, in the hallways and on the field, you know, Matt Ryan is always keeping them on their heels, you know, quizzing them about stuff, you know, making sure things are up to speed. 
you know, Matt Ryan saying is rubbing off on guys like Molly Cox in that way. So, you know, I mean, it's one of those things that you're happy to hear, you know, Molly Cox saying something about it. And then Nate also talking about it again, Paris Campbell being the most active receiver caught three straight touchdowns in the red zone was often Matt Ryan's guys settling into zones. Like I mentioned before, uh, but you know, the, again, the best defensive play he said was Isaiah Rogers catching up to Alec Pierce on a go route. Uh, best offensive play was Paris Campbell diving to the ground for a short pass and tight coverage of Brandon face on who again continues to bring the juice. Okay. So that's a good thing. Says Bobby O'Karake also has been a very active defender. Uh, he's been doing really well in the red zone with, uh, the pass, uh, the pass coverage schemes. So it says that he's impressed with that. And hopefully that it turns into something that we can see going forward. Uh, Julian Blackman suited up, uh, for the first time though. He mainly, uh, stood on the sidelines and watched. He did get, uh, in during the walkthrough with the first team defense. Um, and I think, uh, Zach also posted something about that. We'll have to take a look um, at what he was saying about that. But uh, notice, but no surprise, you see a noticeable difference when Matt Ryan's under center than when not. He's much louder than the quarterbacks during the after snap. The ball rarely touches the ground. Nick Foles threw a bad pick, and Sam Ellinger had an overthrow. Some mistakes happen. You know, things like that happen. But again, like I said, uh, with Moali Cox talking about it, and Ashton Doolin uh, was asked about by Coach Reich and says that his his uh, potential is as high as any of them when it comes to that. Frank Reich on Paris Campbell overcoming his injury history, saying they're freakish things. Makes me feel like, what are the chances that happens again? We're all polling for Paris. I know a lot of Colts Nation has already wanted to give up on Paris Campbell. Uh, believe me, I've seen a lot of it. Um but I, I'm not ready to give up on that just yet. So also I would encourage all of you to take a look at uh, the article that Zach Kiefer put out on the athletic um, about Julian Blackman and how, you know, he's coming back from his Achilles. So uh, I, I hope that you guys can find that read, but overall from a perspective of today, Matt Ryan, again, being, being sharp, Offense doing really well. Paris Campbell, especially doing a good chunk of the work and defense guys like Isaiah Rogers and Bobby O'Karake stepping up in coverage. So that's a good thing to hear. So all in all good stuff, you know, nothing, nothing crazy than what we heard about last week. So, but at the end of the day, it's good to hear some consistency going on with Matt Ryan already getting some chemistry with some of these guys in the locker room. So that's a great thing to hear. Good to see Julian Blackman out there getting a, a few slight reps through walkthroughs. It's good to see him back out there. And we will continue to keep you guys posted as we see it. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know what your thoughts are on OTAs for the second week. And as always, guys, go Colts.